I know, I know, I know, I know I'm late to this. I apologize. I apologize profusely. I did see this drop a couple of days ago. The cucumbers are back with another track. I can't wait for this album. I just couldn't get to this one. I had a whole bunch of things that I needed to catch up. And then life came at me from many different directions as well. And uh, I didn't have a chance to actually get to the things that I wanted to do um, and catch up on. So 21 Pilots next semester. We are doing it right now now so let's rock and roll man let's see what we've got over here let's uh ah oh, let's go 21 pilots i'm always in such a tranquil space when i do 21 pilots let's see what they got let's go <clears throat> Wait a second, wait a second. You can see this is new era shit. You can see this is new era shit. It's absolutely awesome. Josh looking completely fucking jacked back there with his little netting uh, vest over there. Um, also just going mad on those drums over there. Love this like thing that's, you know, that the insecurities with the markings on the neck and the hands, that's back. That's absolutely awesome, right? So definitely new era, but feels a lot like the old era as well. But let me go back. I want to go back to the beginning and just see what he was saying because it kind of took me by surprise in terms of the sound, a very underground type um, um, sort of rock style. <laughs> Also, why does this sound like a a track from FIFA 90, I don't know, <laughs> from FIFA 2016 or something? It just sounds like a track from a FIFA uh, game. I love that. I love that stand up straight now because this actually plays into the whole new era as well in terms of like, it felt like we were down. It felt like, you know, we were, were being knocked down and we're going through this entire journey. But now it's like stand up straight now. You don't want to be here anymore. Essentially, you actually want to be in, in the new era. You want to be, you want to graduate to something better. And he's talking about that. It's actually a very nice See, they're very clever. They always want you to read in between the lines. In terms of graduate, you want to graduate into a new mindset over here. But they're playing this into like the next man, leveling up, right? In terms of school and leveling up mentally, leveling and leveling up in his career, leveling up. The whole thing is just one big level up, right? Which is absolutely awesome. And I like this where he says, it's a taste test of what you hate less, right? I think it's fucking... The way he's flipped that, because most people, when you think about taste test, it's a taste test of what you like more. But this is a taste test of what you hate less. It basically means the same thing, right? But he's literally going the other way in terms of like, from the negativity standpoint, in terms of like, you hate it a lot, right? There was something that actually brought you out of that, that switch that brought you out of that. It's what you like the most. You caught onto that one thing and that became that, 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 that element became the element that actually switched you into a new, into a new uh, uh, mindset, into a new um, sort of era of thinking. Anyway, that's what I, at least, that's my perception. Anyway. But what I hate less, can you die of anxiousness? I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here. What's about to happen? What's about to happen? I remember, Ooh. I remember certain things, what I was wearing. The yellow dashes in the street how mad, how mad that they actually transition in this little hook over here. They transition back to like a bit of a trench type sound, a trenchy sound over here. Right? This sort of melodic, sort of atmospheric type thing. They did that, they do that so damn well. They do it, they did it with a, a bunch of tracks. Chlorine had that kind of vibe. Uh, heavy Dirty Soul. Also, the video plays very much into Heavy Dirty Soul in terms of standing in the middle of the road. Right? And over here, it's kind of like looking back um 
at your past. Wait a second. This is actually fucking interesting. Wait a second. I remember, I remember certain things. What I was wearing, the yellow dashes in the street. I pray in those lights. Oh. You see, this is the thing with fucking 21 Pilots. You don't fuck around with them. They're so fucking clever. You know what I mean? Anyway, this over here is awesome. I like, firstly, let's play into that video, right? The moment the, the limelight or the light literally went on him, that spotlight, he literally did that, right? So it's almost like remembering the fame, remembering that he's now in the spotlight, in the limelight. That's what made him uncomfortable. That's what made him very insecure. They always used to wear the masks because of their insecurity. Now he does it. Now he's completely <clears throat> showing himself. He's bare-chested bare-faced and he's got his insecure he's wearing that he's showing that to the world he's showing that on his hands showing out his neck and he's literally doesn't have that insecurity anymore yet yet there is that instance where he is reminiscent of the past in terms of what it kind of like throws him back to that heavy dirty soul type vibe over there where he talks about being on the street alone now being on the street alone takes me back to Ghana fucking what he was thinking about like the suicide that kind of, lots of things intertwining over here gone a heavy dirty soul the lines on the street being the yellow lines on the street meaning that it's not a solid line meaning that he didn't have to stay in that lane he could actually overtake right but also yellow lines playing into firstly it's an emergency if you think about yellow lines and you think about traffic there's like an emergency there's a time to actually take action there were there were off ramps. There were ways for him to actually get around. He didn't have to be affected by what was in front of him. He actually could. He could overtake uh, um, his insecurities, right? That's why he says the dashes in the street because it means that you can literally pass through them. The dashes in the street being yellow obviously plays into the yellow stripes and the yellow jacket. Also plays into the positivity into the whole trilogy of the banditos, levitates and all that type of up. Um, which... All of that is so clever. And then obviously him being on the street, it's kind of like he's journeying backwards, essentially. He's looking back on his road that brought him here. Super clever. This is the thing about 21 Pilots. They're so clever at intertwining and amalgamating certain things and amalgamating their stories where it all fucking makes sense and it wraps up the story from point to point, right? It's just they're so good at that. So good at that. Tyler's writing is just next level, okay? Absolutely next level. Also has that feeling of that goner, right? But it's almost like not in a negative way. It's actually in a positive way in terms of like he's gone. He's he's over that. He's past that. You know, he's kind of taken uh, the gaps between those yellow lines and found a path for himself where he did find light and life and beauty, right? Which obviously came from his family and his children and things like that. But looking back at those dark times, you still you still get that uh, uh, um, sort of sort of like little earth shudder in your in your chest because it doesn't mean that you can't go back there but the fact that he had that literally becomes the mechanic for how he operates in his future because he's seen the dark side he's seen the darkness right and he's seen how to get out of that which means he has the mechanics to fix that he's experienced in this in this uh, vibe anyway sorry for the whole uh, um sort of uh, long diatribe over here but anyway carry on in the street, I pray in those lights would take me home. Then I heard, hey kid, get out. I prayed those lights would take me home is kind of also alluding to either his salvation or his suicide, right? He's reminiscing now, right? And the car's coming and he got out the way, right? He got out the way. He took the, he took the, the, the path of, of the, uh, uh, salvation, saving himself. Come on. Then I heard, hey kid, get out of the road. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Can't feel my legs. Hey. I might suffocate. There's a pressure in my chest. I don't want to be here. I Yeah. 
fantastic. Take a look. Josh is literally in the same place as Heavy Dirty Soul, right? He was also drumming in the street, right? The thing is that in Heavy Dirty, in Heavy Dirty Soul, he was the car, the vehicle that, it, that he was in was that darkness. The vehicle his, that he was in was that dark space that he was in. That was the journey. He was being, he was being driven by something else, right? Where over here, he's not over here. It's almost like that he's gotten out of that vehicle. He's out of that dark space. He's on that same road. So he's reminiscing and this dark space wants to, Bring him back, wants to take him back into that vehicle, right? And he actually steps out of its way, right? Very, 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 very cool. I like the fact that this is sort of darker because the way they're filming this with this spotlight on um, Tyler over here is very cool because the whole street is dark. There's only a couple of lights over there, whereas the Heavy Dirty Soul was kind of filmed at dawn. So this over here is playing into the memory of the dark space. It's kind of like giving you that nostalgic feeling in terms of where he was, all right? But this is kind of like he's reminiscing the dark space, but he's actually in a better space. The sun is definitely shining tomorrow where heavy, dirty soul kind of felt like his darkness was in broad daylight. Do you know what I mean? So, and it was filmed at dawn where it was almost like he was petrified when it turned, when, when he was going into the night, essentially. So it was like darkness personified across the board. You couldn't get away from it. So this has a different feel to it. I don't know. Let me know if you agree down below. Carry on. That I heard, hey, kid, get out of the road. See, I'm sorry I'm pausing so much, but this over here, I heard, hey, kid, get out of the road. That is either he actually is speaking of a greater power or he's speaking of his own consciousness where literally he gets that snap, right? Where he says, save yourself, get out of the road, right? You've been in this lane for too long. You can save yourself, right? There are other pathways. You know, don't be in effect of, uh, of uh, other things. You can overtake, essentially, Hence the, the, the dashes and that kind of thing. But as he says that, it goes into like, oh, that chanting. That chanting over there kind of is reminiscent of sort of like healing. Almost like it elevates you, right? So it kind of is, it feels spiritual. It feels like you've actually seen the light. That's the, the feeling they get. They're very good at constructing their instrumentation and their lyrics around the actual story, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> This track, this track is so fucking hot. Oh my god, it's so good, man. Oh, I fucking missed 21 pilots, man. This feeling that I get with them is just ridiculous. This is such a good track. This is literally an anthem for the new banditos. Like, even though they're standing there in like a musical capacity, they're actually standing there as sort of like the professors of this sort of frat because it's got a, a bit of a frat boy type feel to it as well so it kind of gives you that college feel essentially but they are the professors they've seen it they've they've sort of acquired this level of wisdom and all they're doing is they're pushing it out through their art in a way that the youth will understand and they can digest right because music has a very powerful way of influencing the youth come on man <laughs> salvation J 
check out how intensely, check out how intensely the crowd is feeling that, right? Check out how intensely that. This literally is speaking to the youth, right? Because the youth literally operate with their heart, right? The old, like As you get older, you operate more with your brain, right? And it is like that. That's what's so beautiful. It, obviously, it's got its pros and cons, right? But the, the great thing about youth is that everything comes from the heart. You feel everything. There's passion. There's a, a massive degree of emoting, right? With that emoting, it shows you your humanity. It shows you who you are as a human being. But it also comes with a lot of of um, pain because you don't like there's real world consequences to certain things that you don't quite understand yet your prefrontal cortex isn't developed as yet you don't see the world for what it is and a lot of the time when you sort of um, sort of steer away from truth and more into the emotion um, you tend to go into a, a world of darkness that you don't quite understand and you're trying to piece it together. You're trying to negotiate your personality. You negotiate your personality with your friends and even yourself. And that can be a very painful thing to do, but a very exhilarating thing to do, dependent on the strength, dependent on how strong you are. You would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. You would rather build your... Uh, um, yourself as as a, a youngster to take on adversity that is what you want you don't want to be you don't want to break but music like this is what actually adds to that kind of thing music like this actually strengthens your resolve to a certain degree because you're going to have those bad days you're going to have those days that are you confused that don't understand the world but everything is just very emotional and everything comes from the heart which is absolutely beautiful that's what's so great about the youth right um and then as you get older right the heart tends to fall away because you sort of become more rigid because the world sh the world shows its true uh, 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 tragedies and you sort of become more rigid towards that and you start thinking more with your head right so um with wisdom comes a lot of comes a lot of of uh, uh, um sort of rationality as well right and uh, the crazy thing is you wish you had that kind of wisdom when you're young. Hence the saying, you know, uh, the, the, the saddest part about life is that youth is given to the young, right? It's sad, but it's beautiful at the same time. But you would rather have that youth when you're wise, but the world doesn't work like that, right? You have to go through your adversity to build character. If you don't go through adversity, you don't fucking build character, right? You're never, ever going to be made into a human being that is stoic and not docile and powerful and can handle things through good times. Good times don't do anything for you. Bad times is what builds you. Bad times is who, what really tests you and makes you the character that you are, right? And I love that they're playing into this over here, specifically into the new generation that needs to hear um, um, something that is real, something that's authentic, something that is truthful. And nothing can come more authentic and more truthful than Tyler Joseph and his fucking journey throughout his life. And anybody who knows, anyone who's going down, going down the discography, anybody who's um, invested a bit of time in their story knows that it was indeed a very difficult road for them, right? But that adds, that's the kind of hope that he can inject into the youth, right? And it, that's very important. So once again, one long little rant for you, but carry on. <laughs> oh, sick. It's a taste. I fucking love it when he does the splitting of the crowd. It reminds me of car radio. Okay, car radio, they were like proper static, static. Right, but I love this car radio, and I actually think it was which one did I listen to? It plays into that song as well. I think it was Trees that he did with the ukulele as well. If I can't, if I'm not remem uh, I'm remembering correctly, right? But I like this. I like that almost like the savior, which is now Tyler Joseph. He was saved. He's now the youth savior, and he is among the populace. He is the real thing in like them it's almost like stop worshiping the golden calf stop the idolatry this is real life right so it's it's kind of like the savior of the youth to a certain degree because he's been through it seen it and he's got on the t-shirt it's a taste test of what i hate less 
I don't want to be here Start fresh with a new year Beautiful Beautiful song this man, fucking hell That is life. Unfortunately, you can't change it. All you can do is learn from it. And that's literally the point of this entire song. What is, is. What happened, happened. It needed to happen. It's okay. That's how you learn. That's how you move forward. It's beautiful. Start fresh next semester. Sick. He's basically saying that every single day you can turn a new uh, um, you can turn a new page, you can turn a new leaf every single day. So it doesn't matter what happened, right? What happened is going to happen, and it's still going to happen, right? You're still gonna face adversity right up until your deathbed, right? But it's okay to sort of close that chapter and open up a new chapter and when you move into the next semester right it means that you've leveled up you've gotten a bit of knowledge you've gotten a bit of wisdom which means that psychologically you've leveled up emotionally you've leveled up you've actually incrementally improving yourself and the things that hold you down can be left behind right and you can start fresh next semester clean slate all of the time and you can keep the things that are that benefit your life keep the things that are valuable to your life and literally drop what you didn't need right you're consistently learning life is about consistently learning right it's one big school at the end of the day and uh um from the moment that you are born you are born into chaos but as you live right you are meant to be putting your life in order piece by piece because the natural order demands that of you look around you everything has an equilibrium and a balance everything is based on order if you go up against the grain the natural order is going to pull you back whether the way you like it or you don't like it it's going to pull you back into the natural order that's why you feel good when you clean up your room that's why you feel good when your office space is sort of clean and you don't have clutter around a cluttered a cluttered space is a cluttered mind right because we are not designed to be in chaos we are designed to make order of chaos you guys let me know what you think down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.